Personal log, stardate 6892.3. Lieutenant Commander Allenby recording. My not-so-sanctioned rescue mission is not off to a good start. Shortly before I lost control of the shuttle, my sensors detected a powerful duonetic field surrounding the entire space around this planet. There's something odd about the frequency. I didn't have enough time to analyze the data before it completely overwhelmed my systems. I can only surmise that the same duonetic field is responsible for her disappearance as well. The effect is intermittent, affecting some tools but not others. <sighs> Communicators and the shuttle itself is inoperative. Tricorder will work, but it's acting really wonky. Since I can't get a signal out, the only choice I have is to proceed with my mission. Hey, Minnie Mouse, be ready for anything.
You scared me. How did you find me? I almost didn't. There's a powerful duonetic field surrounding this entire region of space. It's scrabbling my equipment. Tricorder works, but it's intermittent. Oh. Sit down. I've been walking for days. I guess that answers a few questions. I was so focused on my new engine test that I wasn't scanning for anything else. I just thought my new designs were a failure. I mean, after all, it was a gamble configuring it like that. I was just coming to terms with the idea that I might die in this cave. Is anyone else with you? Admiral Clark didn't exactly sign off on my rescue plan. What? She told me not to even worry about it, but I figured something had to have happened because we lost contact with you. Of course she didn't care. She's never shown anything but contempt for me. And there I was, a 19-year-old wunderkind, showing up to Starbase wanting to design new warp coils. She hates me. She doesn't hate you could have fooled me. I was always just trying to help. When older officers would miss things and I would say something, she would always just be like, shut up, Ioka. <sighs> Sorry. I've had about a week in this cave to think about how the last two years of being an aggressive genius kid has landed me in a cave on a desert planet. I guess we're both stuck here for now. I'm just glad I found you. I couldn't abandon you. I had to know what happened. Sometimes I think you're the only person I have. I'm glad you came to find me. Even if you did almost kill me pointing that phaser around. You could have been captured by Klingons! And if your phaser hadn't worked? Then it would have been hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, that would have been cool. And you're totally a kung fu master. But you're also five feet tall and nowhere near Klingon space. It could have been Orion pirates, or Nausicaans, or blood-sucking, body-snatching aliens? Nope. I just crashed. Because I'm a bad pilot. So much for an adventurous rescue mission. Adventure, excitement, discovery. That's what they sell us on to get us to sign up for Starfleet. Look what the thirst for adventure got us. The two smartest people on Starbase 12, marooned for all eternity on a dead planet. Ioka, the smartest person on Starbase 12, also galaxy's biggest pessimist. I mean, I have been here a while. It's just an empty cave. Not even any Klingons to torture me for information or keep me company. Why did you think I was captured? Figured between your new warp engine designs and the duonetic field, something had to have happened. Because a duonetic field it's is an artificially, artificially generated form of energy. If I could modify the tricorder to hone in on whatever's generating it, we could shut it down. But the damn thing keeps cutting out. Maybe the problem is the solution. I can get the translator to run directly off of the duonetic field. That is, if you can get me that bizarre frequency. You wouldn't happen to have a toolkit in your bag. I'm a scientist, not an engineer. Well, looks like we'll be making the long trek back to my shuttle to get one. You can't use a hairpin or something? We'll go when the primary sun sets. Let's rest for now. It'll be a while. Don't worry. There's not any bloodthirsty monsters in this cave. It doesn't even go back very far.
You know, I can't get a fix on that energy field, but I can scan that blue giant, and it's over 500 astronomical units away. That's five times the diameter of Pluto's orbit in the Sol system. And it's illuminating the surface of this entire planet. That's how bright that star is. So is this your first blue giant binary star system? <laughs> My homeworld has a red dwarf. That star will live for trillions of years. Blue giant? Only a couple million? Blink of an eye on the cosmic scale. This is why I joined Starfleet. To experience things like this for myself. That's why I want to design the fastest engines in the galaxy. So you don't have to see them through a telescope. We're like peanut butter and jelly, you and me. Just exploring the galaxy. Yeah, we just have to figure out how to get off this planet first. There's that. Ha. Ah, found it. Let me see the tricorder. You okay? My spidey sense is tingling. Calm down, your spidey senses are always tingling. Relax, beautiful, it's just the wind. I have coordinates. Three kilometers due northeast. Ugh, great. Three more kilometers. Hey, at least it's not 150. Whoa. Right? In your estimation, what would it take to generate an energy field that powerful? The deflector ray of a heavy cruiser couldn't even do that. And a weird frequency. Normally a duonetic field wouldn't affect our impulse engines, but it would short out all of our other gear. It would take a lot of effort to tune it the other way around. We just happened to crash within three kilometers of the source? This isn't some coincidence. The shuttle's plasma control assembly is missing. Okay, maybe something is going on here. Let's figure out who staged this crash and what they're after. You're gonna regret that you were right. This looks like a simple mining facility, but it's been abandoned. This makes no sense. The energy waves are coming from deep underground. Well, this shouldn't be at all dangerous. Powerful energy wave coming from deep underneath an abandoned Iridium mine on a dead planet? I knew I should have updated my final message to family and friends months ago. It's up to us. Who knows what could be down there? It could be an ancient artifact so powerful that it could determine the fate of the entire galaxy. That or someone left the oven on. How do we even get down there? There's a mine shaft that leads straight to it. Akuchi Moya. This just gets better and better. A device that small is putting out the energy wave? What the hell is it? It looks like a giant Easter egg. Naturally. None of this makes any sense. A device that powerful and there's no one down here guarding it? Well, they force us to crash. Hope we can't detect their dampening field. And with no way to call for help, we die of thirst. Then they steal our ships. Definitely alien technology. 
and nothing that we've ever seen before. We'll look on the bright side. Encountering weird unknown alien stuff is kind of why we're here. Oh. You okay? You touched it! How could you be so irresponsible? Me? Irresponsible? I was just trying to, I was just trying to turn it off and you were the one that wanted me to, wanted to go on an adventure. Are you kidding me? I didn't want adventure. I came to rescue you. And you're gonna get pissed at me? You, you're an engineer. You should know better than to touch, touch things. You should know better than to open your mouth. I'll show you an adventure when I touch your, my fist, my, with my fist, your face. I'll do the touching here. I'll touch you, I'll touch everything. This black belt's gonna kick, kick your ass. I guess that's why they didn't need guards. Is everything okay? Sir, y yes, sir, Cap Captain? Commodore Jaconde. This is Dr. Estevez. You're aboard the USS Excalibur. Lieutenant Commander Allenby. Admiral Clark dispatched us once we realized Dr. Ayoko's shuttle was lost. It's fortunate that you were able to shut down the dampening field so that we could beam you up. It would have taken us several days to modify a shuttle for rescue. Looks like you're injured and suffering from dehydration. Might be a good idea to head to sickbay. I have a confession to make. Our motives weren't completely selfless in rescuing you. Our ship is a test bed for all kinds of new technologies. And our ship's engineer, Captain Eric Menard, will love your help in solving a few issues before he takes command of the USS Constar. Eric Menard? The Eric Menard wants my opinion? I'm honored, sir. He's the only engineer in Starfleet who holds the rank of captain. But he reads your work, and he thinks it has merit. Never underestimate your value. 
You have so much to offer. Captain Eric Menard has seen this ship through two complete refits. It's time for him to complete these tests and move on. He thinks you're the best person to help him through the final phase, and Admiral Clark agrees. Thank you, Captain. I won't let you down. Let's get you to sick bay to heal those wounds. Some fluids will help you feel better. This way. Just a moment, Commander Allenby. Sir, I'm sorry I disobeyed orders. You did more than disobey orders. You destroyed a shuttle. You should face court martial for that. I'm kidding. You did disobey orders. But you also solved the puzzle that helped us find the both of you. Sometimes following orders isn't always the right thing to do. Thank you, Commodore. If you're gonna be my first officer, you're gonna have to deal with my sense of humor every once in a while. Wait. First officer? Don't get too excited. This ship has become infamous over the past few years. Almost destroyed twice. More crew turnover than any ship sees in 20 years. Mostly because the last crew was killed. Honestly, I think the only reason why they have a Commodore running this thing is because the last two captains died. Being a first officer of this ship is a job no one else wants. But it's also the right position for the right first officer. Sounds like the perfect challenge for an OCD drama queen from Beta Koopsik who's always looking for adventure in all the wrong places. Well, if adventure's what you're looking for, then you've come to the right place. Adventure's my middle name. As far as names go, I'm Amari. I'm... Michaela. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant Commander Michaela Allenby. Welcome to the bridge, Commander. This ship is so beautiful. I haven't seen these upgrades yet. Please, take your station. Thank you for manning my station. Welcome aboard. Starfleet has been picking up some very strange gravitational waves coming from the vicinity of the Delure Belt, but they can't seem to isolate their point of origin. Scanning. Wow. What are you seeing? It's like the waves aren't even happening yet. Explain. They're out of phase with space-time, like an echo of an event that hasn't even happened, or happened in a completely different quantum dimension. Can you isolate their point of origin? Stand by. There! The Cavus Alpha Star System. Isn't there a dense neutron star in that system? Yes! There's a theory for a long time now that gravity and space-time are linked. I've had my own theory about a multiversal hub through which all space and time flow. A cosmic stream. I'm rambling. <laughs> Commodore, message from Starfleet. Gravitational waves are growing in intensity, sir. 
We are ordered to investigate as soon as possible. It's not a coincidence that you wanted me on this mission. Your reputation precedes you. Is it safe to investigate? Probably not. But it'll be an adventure. Helm, set course for the Cavus Alpha Star System. Warp Factor 6. Course laid in, Captain. Hit it! I like what you've done with your hair. Thanks. Change seemed appropriate. Like the beard. How are you, Jamie? I got a change of clothes and feel a little more normal. I think it's just hitting me how insane this all is. This is insane, right? This morning our lives were completely different. One day, now it's been four years. Could be worse. The universe thought we were dead and moved on, but we're not. Can we even go back to our lives now? Maybe not the exact lives we had, but we'll move forward. And if you need me, I'll be here for you. Did I ever tell you how Beck and I became friends? No. The three of us, Lance, Amanda, and I were on a training mission. There was an accident. My communicator was destroyed. She was bleeding badly. Had a broken leg, broken arm. There we were in the middle of the woods on some backwater planet with no way to call for rescue. Lance had to walk 30 kilometers back to base for help. Three days, it was just the two of us. She hated my sense of humor, but making her laugh was the only way we got through it. She and I got through that. You and I will get through this. Bridge to Captain Mason. You have a transmission from the Excalibur, sir. Put it through. Speaking of Beck, it's probably her calling right now. Michaela, I was expecting Beck. I thought you should hear this from me and not Garth. What happened? Beck and Ramirez are missing in the line of duty. They disappeared over two years ago. I'm transmitting the details. All we know is that they're missing. I appreciate you reaching out. Well, I had another reason for calling. I read your report about what you experienced. About 18 months ago, we found evidence of the aliens you mentioned in your report. The Cosmic Stream. I was hoping to learn more about it. We didn't learn much. I think you're here for a reason. And so much of what you experienced is tied directly to the aliens you encountered in there. I think we're all living in an alternate timeline. Avalon timeline? Avalon universe? Avalon is the island where Excalibur was forged. Clever. I believe the alien incursions changed time itself. 
not just after the incursion, but before it as well. It changed the entire space-time continuum, like throwing a rock into a pond. Lieutenants Mason and Archer, reporting for duty. Captain Allenby, we're going to engage in a salvage operation on the Excalibur. There are no life signs and no energy readings. I need you two to scout it out and bring it for towing so that the Enterprise can bring it back to Starbase. After what I've seen, I suppose anything's possible. I think the aliens returned you here for a reason. In this universe. Right here and now. Red alert. Take emergency stations. We'll have to call you back. What are we gonna do? This isn't even our ship. I guess this is where we find out if we're here for a reason.